Hi guys, I'm here today to do an unboxing and uh, check to see what's inside this Dimensions kit. It's a Dimensions paint work, paint work kit and um, I bought this locally but I know that you can get them online also. I see them on Amazon and various other places. So this is the one I chose and it is called, hmm, does it have a name? Garden Bluebirds. So it's a pretty big box compared to the paint by number that I just did. And let's turn it over and see what it looks like on the back side. All right, it looks like it's got um, uh, some information about the paints and uh, how to use them and stirring and mixing. It's got all of that information. Um, some different containers for doing your mixing. I'm going to read up on that a little bit in more detail later on. But right now I just want to see what's inside. So let's go ahead and open it up. It looks like the paints are taped inside the box so that they don't move around. And I believe that that's all that's in there. Oh, no, there's another one. Good thing I look. is all that's in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and move the box over to the side over here. And let's look and see. Okay. So we've got paints. Let's open those up. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, wow. These are really nice. So they're all um, stuck together. And it's got the numbers on them, and it, that looks very nice. Let's let's open one up and see what it looks like. Let me move this out of the way. Do not want to get paint on it. Oh wow! Okay, that looks very nice, nice and creamy, not dried up at all, and yeah, has a nice. That it's easy to open. I really like that. Compared to the kit I just did, this is pretty cool. Um, that's cool. Oh, look at that. So you can, hmm, what is this? oh, so you, you can separate them if you want and keep them separate. So hold one in your hand while you're painting, or you can keep them together. So well, that's cool. Okay, good. So there's that set. Oh, pretty colors. Don't know if there's duplicates to any of the colors. I think these all look like they're probably different. Okay, yes. So these are the colors. Beautiful. Okay. So far, I'm happy with that. Uh, and there should be a brush in here. Let me move these off to the side here. Okay. And there's the brush. This looks like it's taped to the back. Well, it's a good thing that's on the back because it really didn't tape didn't come off too well. Okay, this is the brush that it came with, and it looks very nice, nice and pointy and sharp. So, I don't know if that's going to focus or not, but that looks really nice. Looks pretty similar to the the one I just used on the other paint by number kit. If you watched my other video, so yeah, 
that looks good. has quite a bit thinner of a handle, but it's uh, very lightweight, so I don't know. I'll let you know. I'm, I'm not an expert with paintbrushes, so I don't know if that's a good brush or not, but it looks good. We'll set that to the side, and it looks like it comes with a... Oh, I was going to say, that's only half of it. Okay. So it comes with this big long sheet, which isn't showing up all the way in here. I can't get it. It's pretty long, but it's definitely a, what do you call that? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a guide, basically, so that when you paint over some of the numbers on the canvas and you need to reference them, it's a reference guide. That's what I'm looking for that shows I would not have thought by looking at this that it was going to have such tiny little areas as that. Um, I thought this was going to be easier than the one I just did, but looking at this now, it looks just as difficult. And it's got the little chart over here about how to mix the colors, how they correspond. So these are the mixed colors, and um, yeah, okay. so. Kind of similar to a Dimensions cross stitch kit, which I do those all the time. Looks easy. Now let's look at the canvas. Now one thing I'm noticing right out of the box is that this canvas sort of has a, I don't know if you can, probably can't tell in there, but it has almost a warp to it. It's, it's almost kind of scooped like that, so it doesn't lay completely flat. But that's not that big of a deal because um, I'm going to frame it when it's done anyway, so it's find that it's a little warped, but you can see it just kind of wants to scoop up. But I don't know if there's enough light to really see how this looks. The canvas looks very nice. has a slight bit of a texture to it. And it's on cardboard. I wasn't sure what kind of canvas this was going to be on. So yeah, it looks like just a bigger, badder version of the one that I just did. And if this is the first time you're coming to my videos, you can look um, back at my other videos and just I'll probably create a playlist so you can see what other paint by number I did in case I do more of these. But I'm just kind of scrolling through. So I'm really excited to get started on this. I like that it's got some big open areas here that I could really um, get some paint flowing. And yeah, I'm excited to give this a try. So okay, stay tuned. Um, I'm probably going to start that this, um, this evening. And but I won't check in again until tomorrow morning. So what I'd like to do is just show you maybe the progress that I made tonight before I, um, just because the, the lighting might not be real good tonight when I'm painting on it. So I'm going to need to show that um, during the day because I'm already kind of losing my light now. I'm next to a window, but I just, I just don't know if this is good enough light. So I just wanted to unbox that with you guys and so you can see what's inside and we can um, see how we're going to go with that. Okay guys, here we go. Let's get started. Wow, these paints are really nice. Really nice and thin and they go on really smoothly. I'm seeing a tiny little hair. If you look at that tip of that brush right there, I'll see if I can focus it. There's a tiny little hair. I need to go cut that off. But so far, just uh, starting out with these paints, they really, really go on smooth. So, okay, well, I can't really paint with while I'm holding my phone, so I'll check in in a bit and we'll see how, see how it's looking. Okay, about 15 minutes has gone by, 15, 20 minutes has gone by, and I've been painting with this color. And uh, there's a lot of that color. It's number 17 that I'm doing. So you can see there's a lot of that in the background. And I've decided that I'm going to stop and I'm going to work on these areas that are colored in. These gray and then probably these black areas down here because I'm somehow thinking maybe they wanted you to paint those first. Uh, just because they're darker. So I'm going to stop doing number 17 and I'm going to work on some of these gray areas and because they're spread out throughout the canvas I'll probably have to let that dry. So that may be all that I do for now um, because I have some other things to do today and my coffee's almost done. So um, I'll check in as soon as I get that done.
Okay, after a day of painting, and I'm talking really quietly because I have a um, group of teenage boys that are sleeping in this morning. My two teenagers had a sleepover last night, and it was a late night of gaming, so I'm trying to be quiet. Before I get started on my morning painting, this is what I did yesterday. So I finished all the shaded areas, and which were, was the dark green and black. And I'm going to continue now working on the area 17, which I had started yesterday, which looks like black, but it's not actually black. So that I'm going to continue on and fill in all these areas of 17, which I suspect will get kind of boring. I can't guarantee that I'll only stick with that color, but that's the goal. Okay, and I just made myself a cup of coffee, and I'm going to get going. See you in a little while. Okay, it's been uh, 24 hours. So 24 hours later, it is now the next morning. And I just wanted to show the progress that I got done. So I continued, yeah, I didn't do too much down there. Um, mostly worked on, well, yeah, I guess I worked on that uh, with the dark. So you can kind of tell the difference right there between, let me point to it. So the black and then the color I did yesterday, which was a really, really dark green. Um, so I just did a lot of that and I cannot wait to get into some color, but I still have a lot of that number 17 to do. As you can see, there's a lot of these big areas here are the number 17 that I need to finish up this morning. So... Um, one thing I am going to do is this is the brush that came with the kit. So if I have to critique one thing so far about this kit that I don't like, it's the fact that this handle on this paintbrush is, is thin. And when I'm painting for a while, I start to get a cramp in my hand. So I went and grabbed the brush from the paint by number kit that I did in my last video. It um, was the Royal and Lang Nickel. And it has a fat handle, and it's just more comfortable to hold. So, um, But as you can see, it doesn't have as quite of a pointy tip as this one. So I like the tip on this one for doing the fine detailed work. But to fill in big areas, I think I'm going to just uh, go with this one because it's much more comfortable on my hand. So that's what I'll do today. So got coffee next to me, ready to go. And I'm going to uh, sip and paint. All right, I'll check in in a bit or probably tomorrow, probably check in tomorrow. And um, hopefully I'll have some color to show you because I think what I'm gonna do when I finish this 17 is I'm gonna go right down to that flower. Oh, you know what, no, I shouldn't do that yet. I think I'm gonna work on the birdhouse. So as a reminder, that's how it looks. So yeah, I think I'll save the flowers and the birds for the last. And I think I might go in and work on either the birdhouse or uh, maybe some of these leaves down here. Depends how I feel about green. Of course, I probably should fill in that green up there, some more green. I don't know. But I do know I'm going to probably save the flowers and the birds for last until I, unless I just really need some bright color, and then I might paint that flower right there, that one right there. Okay, I'll check in in a bit. Bye. Good morning. It has now been 24 hours since the last clip I filmed, and I wanted to show you my progress. So what I ended up doing is finishing the rest of number 17, which was this darker green right here. And then I did uh, mixed a color, this sort of next little shade lighter of that green right there. And throughout the day, I managed to get all of that done also, which was L, letter L. So let me just pan slowly so you can see where that was. So now I have three greens down. And I'm going to today work on uh, pretty much the rest of the leaves that you see up here, which are all the letter J. There's a few uh, that H in there but not much. Most of this that you see is J. So I looked at that on the key and it looks like J is 
number six and number nine. So that would be these two colors right there. So this is going to be basically a blue-green color. And yeah, um, I'm going to work on it. It is actually Christmas Eve right now, and I'm going to paint a little bit before the house wakes up. I'm pretty much ready for Christmas. I have two presents to wrap and a pie to bake before going over to my mom's for Christmas dinner tonight at 5. So actually, I probably should go do a big grocery shopping too, but I'm trying to ignore the fact that I have to do that because it's my least favorite thing to do. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I should be able to get some painting in throughout the day. So yeah, I, I, in order to, I didn't just sit and do all that green in one shot yesterday. I actually um, just worked on it throughout the day, just here and there. Because what I did is I bought some of these empty little paint pods. And where's my mixed color? And I just mixed some of the letter L right in there. So I would mix quite a bit of it at a time. And then uh, throughout the day, I can just put the lid on it and then come and do some painting as I found myself having time. So I'm going to do the same today. Maybe I'll show you how I mix that. Okay, so I got my coffee as usual and I'm ready to paint. Good morning. It is the day after Christmas and I set up my tripod because I was going to show you how I mix some colors and I forgot that I didn't show you my progress that I made over Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I was able to get a little bit of painting in and so I finished up. I'll just try to turn it sideways here and I can't remember where I left off. I think I needed to finish doing all of this sort of blue-green color. Had I shown that to you guys? I don't think I had. So. You can see I did all of that background and some of it all the way down here toward the bottom. And then last night I was a little tired of looking at green, so I decided to do a little bit of a brown color number 13 right there. And those pieces were very tedious. They were very tiny, but um, you know, I, I think when you do these paintings, you know, I just don't, you don't really have to get too caught up in staying in the lines too perfectly. Well, that being said, I was just going to show you, um, I wasn't sure when I started how to mix the colors. So if you, ha if you have a small area, I find that it works good just to mix your colors right in one of these little palette, pot palettes that I found just at the craft store and bought like a pack of four for hardly anything. And... It uh, works out well just to mix it right in there, but I have a lot of the number H to do because it's the rest of these, uh, the, the green areas here and all the way down toward the bottom down there. So I have enough to mix that I've decided I am going to mix a bit of it uh, in one of these. So I bought a pack of these, which was also very inexpensive, and I got those at the craft store. And you just, um, I'm sure you can cut it, but let's just break one off here. Alright, and they close nice so if I don't get all of the H done in one sitting I can come back and I can just close that and it'll stay fresh. So if you look at the key over here, it shows that H is a mixture of five and six. So we'll go ahead and do that. I always like to put a piece of paper down, obviously, so I don't... I mean, it's probably best to not even mix these on top of your painting, but since I already have my tripod set up, this is where it'll be. Uh, so this brush came from my stash. It did not come with the kit. I was looking for some kind of little spoon or scooper that I could use to sort of mix equal parts. And this is a very non-scientific way of mixing these, but I find that, you know... It's kind of with the charm of making everybody's painting unique is if your color is slightly off from uh, somebody else that does this painting. So what I do is, let's start with the lighter color. And you know what? I didn't stir this and I can tell it looks like it needs to be stirred. I wonder if I just shake it. That's, oops, there's a nice big air bubble there now. Okay. Yeah, that looks good enough. So 
what I've been doing is you just kind of determine about how many areas you have to fill and um, I don't have a ton of H's but I think that I have enough that what I can do is do so I don't know, can you see what I'm doing I'm sort I sort of stick my brush in so that the whole thing's covered and I just scrape it off and and then try not to get interrupted so you can keep count I've done one Three. So we'll do three of those. And let's close it up. Now I don't rinse this. I just take a paper towel over here and I just I wipe it to sort of clear the excess paint off of there but I don't rinse it because I kind of want that when I mix it in. I still want what's on the brush. And you don't have to worry about it contaminating this as long as you don't stir it around in there. And so I basically, so what did I do, three of those? See, it just, if, as long as you go in and out, it doesn't leave any of the paint behind. So let's do three of these. It's one. Okay, well, um, I went on and um, actually finished mixing my paint color and painted while I was chatting with you guys for a while and realized that um, I had run out of space on my storage space on my phone and so it had cut off way back when I was mixing the paint. So I just was going to open this and show you that this was what the final color looked like. Really need to look at my camera more when I'm recording to see if it's still recording. So those were the two colors I mixed. That was the color we ended up with right there. And I'm starting to lose my sunlight out of my window. So it's kind of getting a bluish tinge in here. But yeah, I had finished mixing that. So basically what I did is just the brush that I was scooping it in with, I stirred with. And um, then what I had done is I had started painting. And I had painted these color, this, yeah. So I had just a few uh, little areas that hadn't been painted there and that called for that color. So I'm painting with just some natural light coming in from the window. I like that lighting best, but because it's December here and you lose your light pretty early in the day, you know, then I did set up this. Actually, let me turn on this light and see what that looks like on here. It's the light magnifier light that I use when I cross stitch. So that looks pretty good. But I, I do like the natural light. I like how the color comes in and uh, co comes in kind of from the side. It allows me to see real, real nicely the lines and stuff. So, um,. Yeah, I would just I had just was talking about Christmas. It's the day after Christmas and I was uh had mentioned that we uh go over to my mom's on Christmas Eve. Growing up I always had the tradition of going over to my grandma's house on Christmas Eve. Uh, I come from a big Italian family on my mom's side. So all right, I'm not doing a real good job at that. Okay. Um so my grandma actually used to cook spaghetti dinner every Sunday as I was growing up for all of my cousins and aunts and uncles. I was fortunate to uh, live near them all and we um, had a big spaghetti dinner at my grandma's house every Sunday when I was growing up. And then um, she lived to be about 102 and she passed away in 2013 and my mom has taken over the tradition of she doesn't do the every Sunday thing but she does have Christmas Eve at her house and I have two brothers and we all so me and two, my two brothers we all have we have two boys each so all of our first sons were born six weeks apart from each other and then a couple years later, we all had uh, our second sons about six months apart from each other. So between the three of us, we have six boys and they are all teenagers now. So our Christmases are, are 
a little more calmer than they used to be when we used to have six toddler boys running around. Um, I do miss those days. They were fun, the hustle and bustle and excitement of Christmas. And now they're, um, when we get together for holidays and stuff, they most likely, you know, find a back room and get a good game of poker going or <laughs> get on their devices. And, you know, things are just quite a bit calmer than they used to be. So we had a nice Christmas Eve with my family and then um, Christmas Day. We had a nice relaxing day at home with my two boys and my husband. And I was able to get some painting in because my boys had um, some, they had some things to keep them busy. Um, my husband was smoking some ribs on the grill and he was having fun doing that. And my younger son, who's 15, he got an electronic drum set for Christmas and so, and some various, they were doing their various video games. My older son, who's 17, he wanted a second monitor for his computer and one of those, it's like a MIDI keyboard so that he can make some music. So yeah, we had uh, two happy boys with their new toys yesterday and I think we, we got them some gift cards for their gaming. So that, yeah, they did some gaming for So point is, I got some time to paint yesterday. It's a nice relaxing day. That's why I was able to get some done. Um, then in the evening, my husband and I, we are late to the game, but we started watching Game of Thrones a couple weeks ago. So it's 2019 right now. So if, I don't know if, when you're watching this, but basically that series has come and gone. And uh, we didn't have HBO, so we had never watched the series. And we had some um, credits with our Google Play account. There's this app that we have where you earn credits, and they were going to expire. And we had quite a bit of them, so we decided to buy... Oops, am I doing this? Yes, I thought I was going out of the wrong area here. So anyway... We decided to use our credits to buy season one through three of Game of Thrones so that we could see what that was all about. So we watched already seasons one through three, and now we are on, we just finished up season four last night. So, oh yeah, so anyway, we, we ran out of our the season one through three, and then we were trying to decide if we wanted to um, watch it anymore or not, because, yeah, it's a, <laughs> It's a bit violent, so I don't know, kind of get used to the violence, I guess, as it goes on, but we were just going to stop watching it, and then we, we kind of found ourselves keep talking about it, like, well, I wonder what's going to happen with so-and-so, and, you know, I'd like to see what's going to happen here, so a bit of a shaky hand going, I was going to show you, when, sometimes when my hand gets really shaky, I'll just use my other hand here <laughs> to kind of stabilize it when I'm doing these really tiny areas. It's kind of like I use it as a sort of a fulcrum. I don't know why all of a sudden I got a little bit of a shaky hand going on. Okay. So sometimes when I go out of the lines, a little like that. You know when you're, um, so I have just my water right here, but you know, I, when my paintbrush starts to get kind of thick and it doesn't make a nice point anymore, I just go and rinse it off and get a nice point going again. And some of this paint toward this end, this top end, kind of dries up a little bit too. So sometimes I'll just take some water like that, just kind of scoop it off the sides a little, kind of water that down a little bit before it gets too dry. And then, yes, it also helps to um, wet, when it's wet to get a, a nicer point. So, <laughs> yeah. So when I went out of the lines a little bit right there and I know that, that I've already painted the black, what I'll do is just stabilize my hand again and then just kind of reshape that leaf a little bit like that. Because really in the long run, who's going to know, right? There you go. I just sort of made that look a little bit different. Now, I know I mentioned in my last video that, so in case you're watching me for the first time paint, I, I just wanted to remind you I'm not a painter. I have no experience, really, before doing, this is my second paint by number, 
and I have no experience, no prior experience. I don't, I don't know how to paint. I don't know anything about that. I'm just sort of learning as I go. And ooh, this is tedious right here. And so the way I do it might be different than the way somebody else does it. And that's okay because it's a hobby and it's supposed to be fun and relaxing. And you can do it any way you want. That's the way I see it anyway. Okay, um, oops, looks like there's a little bit of, it's kind of weird how these colors just sort of keep popping up. I actually paint a little bit faster when I'm not talking, so I normally go through these areas a little bit quicker. And as soon as I finish this area, I think I will turn off the camera and just go and continue painting and um, show you where I get with that. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed um, listening to me ramble about things. Did I finish all my thoughts? I tend to go talking about something and then switch gears and n not go back and finish what I was saying. I think I finished all my complete thoughts, though. So, okay. Um, all right, we'll check in and I'll show you where I get with this. Okay, bye. Good morning. It is December 29th and I thought I would pop in here and just give you a view of where I'm at. So I pretty much finished the birdhouse. And all I so the birdhouse and the leaves in the background are all complete and I now get to start on the flowers. Technically I did start on the flowers just because this color in the birdhouse was actually in the flowers too, so while I had the paint out, I went ahead and did those, but I'm excited to get started on all these colors that are going to be in the flowers. So, get to look at something other than brown and gray. I'm still not great at mixing colors. I would have liked there. See, if you look at my, you know, mine, this just looks almost more of a reddish brown, and there's just not a lot of contrast, but it's okay. I'm, I'm still happy with how it looks, and if you don't compare it to this picture, then it looks better. And I think when all is said and done, that will be very unnoticeable just because it's basically the shadow area and you can tell that that's what it is definitely the farther away that you stand. So, all right, I've got my coffee going and I'm going to get started in with flowers today. So, all right, we'll check in and I'll let you know. Probably won't check in again until um, they're done, with the exception of I might do some time lapse in there for you to watch, and then we get to do the birds. Oh yeah, I did the birds' eyes too, because I was a little nervous that those weren't going to turn out, so I just needed to get those done, and they turned out good. Okay, see you in a bit.
Well, good morning and Happy New Year. It is actually New Year's Day 2020. And this is where I ended up with the flowers yesterday. I've completed them. And they look great. A little bit of a close-up there. I went over the white areas just to kind of give them a second coat. Um, and I'll probably double check and make sure that you can't see any of the numbers when I'm all said and done. But all that's left are the birds. And I was looking at them. Oh, let me sit down. I was looking at this. So these are the colors I'm going to be using for the bird. It's birds, plural. Um, by themselves and also blends of those. And I was looking at the numbers. And there are, if you can see, there's a, a lot of blended colors there. So there's a lot of numbers and a lot of blends. So I think these birds will be probably the most tedious part of this. And um, I'd like to say that I'm going to get this done today, but I don't know because I started a new cross-stitch project today too because I like to start a new cross-stitch project on New Year's Day. So I'm going to divide my crafty time between the two. I'm definitely going to get started on this, and I think I'll start with that little guy right there. And um, it looks like he doesn't have quite as many different colors in him, so I'll, I'll probably uh, start with him, and then just as the extra blends I have, I'll, I'll use here, and then um, you know move up to the birds, and then you know use up the rest of the mixes. But I don't think I'll mix. I don't know if I'm going to mix enough to do. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is normally I just pick a color and do all of that color, but I don't know if I'm going to do that because I, I want to just complete that bird. I don't know. We'll see. You know me. My plans always change. So, okay, I suspect the next time you see me, um, I'll be done with this. And I forgot to mention, too, that I, uh, for Christmas, I got a new, another new paint-by-number kit, and it's another one by Dimensions, and it's of a bald eagle. And I'll... Uh, probably insert a picture of that here, but I don't know if I'll make a video of that one or just paint it, but we shall see. We'll have to see. I'm going to edit this video and try to get it up soon. And um, I'll probably also put a little bit of time lapse in of me doing a little bit of the birds, but um, yep, we're on the home stretch for this one and it's been so fun. I've loved it. Okay, we'll check in in a bit. I did want to stop and mention um, something about, it's actually not related to this here, let me move my tripod just a little bit here, but if you ever paint, this, if you're watching this because you have this kit and maybe you're trying paint by number for the first time and you're kind of like me and you're new to painting, this area right here, this green, is the only area that had uh, dotted lines around this section and it actually, I couldn't find anywhere in the instructions that it said what that dotted line meant, but I was watching um, another YouTube video in which they said that the dotted line means that you need to sort of blend the... T um, blend is not the word. I guess, yeah, blend. You basically are supposed to use either a technique like um, dry brushing... Um, what am I trying to say? In the picture, if you look right here... That green area is supposed to be kind of a mossy color, a, a mossy, um, not a mossy color, like look like moss on top of the bird nest or the bird house. And so basically they wanted you to blend or sort of soften the edge around that gray. And apparently there's a few ways of doing it. Um, and I, I didn't do a real good job on it um, because I wasn't quite sure what to do. So what I did is while the paint was still wet, this green, I just took basically a, a dry brush afterwards and, or you know, you know what I think I did is I just used my regular brush that I was painting with, so I painted the green and then I dried the brush off and I sort of took it and I don't want to do it with this brush because it's kind of wet, but I basically took it and just sort of 
feathered it into the brown to try to give it a softened edge. And the only way, the only area that it really worked is kind of in this area right here. You can see it sort of has a blended softened edge going into the brown. But even though I did it with the rest, it's it's still probably a bit sharper of an edge than it's supposed to be. But I suspect as I go on with my next kit, the one I was telling you about with the eagle, the whole background on it is basically sky and trees in the far distance, and they have a very soft edge, and it looks like it's all blended. So I suspect by the time I'm done with that painting, I will be very good at this technique. But for this one, it was just a kind of an introduction to blending that green in with that brown, and I don't think I did it as adequately as I would have liked, and I may go back and work on that just a little bit, but I don't know. You know, in the long run, from the distance, it really, it's not that big of a detail, so I may just leave it the way it is, but I wanted to mention that just in case you are um, painting this kit, too, and you're new and you don't know what to do with that part. That's basically how I handled it. As you can see here, I'm putting in my last color. I uh, just have a few sections in the birds here to finish up, and uh, then we'll call this one finished. So what is today? Today's January uh, 2nd. Is it the 2nd or the 3rd? I've completely lost track because I'm on vacation. I think it's only January 2nd. Um, so um, I'm just going to probably do a little time lapse here, and show you um, me painting the last part of this. This definitely was the most tedious part, the birds, especially around their faces. There was a lot of tiny little areas that didn't have symbols in them, so I had to refer back to the chart, and then um, I had to keep going back and, you know, adding uh, adding little bits and pieces of color from the symbols that I had already done. So basically in cross-stitching we would call that confetti stitching. I don't know what you call it in the painting world, confetti painting. Um, so it's just tedious to have to go back and fill in those tiny little spots, especially when I have to mix a little bit of the color. So wait, my paint's getting dry. I'm going to go ahead and finish up these last little symbols and maybe do a little finishing touch on the white because the white seems to need to be blended a second time. So, all right, enjoy. Here is the finished product. Let's just uh, scroll on down so you can see some of the details. So my final review on this product project it was it was absolutely amazing. I loved it. I had so much fun stitching it, and I think the result turned out really good considering the fact that this is my only my second paint by number, and I have no painting experience. So I think if you're wanting to give it a try, this would definitely be, the Dimensions kits would definitely be something good to try. 
I'm going to go back still and probably fill in just where you can see some of the numbers. Maybe just add a little bit of second coat on top of that and try to blend it where you can see some of the lines. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I'm really excited. Um, it was kind of a bummer that my canvas had a warp in it. Pretty much from when I took it out of the box. What is that little white speck right there? Um, you can kind of see right here. See how it had a warp in it? That was kind of annoying because it kind of kept, you know, wobbling a little bit while I was painting. But I'm going to get it framed, and so then it won't be any issue. So, okay, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.